Hello and welcome to Delhi Sala Digital. You're watching Sala News Print, and these are the latest updates. The humanitarian crisis worsens in Palestine as Israel continues its airstrike bombardments. According to a World Health Organization official, around 1,000 unidentified bodies were still buried under the rubble in Gaza. At the same time, a severe fuel shortage threatens the supply of food aid provided by the United Nations in Gaza. According to Gaza health authorities, more than 7,000 people have been killed by Israeli bombing since Hamas gunmen launched deadly cross-border attacks on Israel on October 7. Congress leader Priyanka Gandhi Vadra expressed her strong condemnation of the ongoing cycle of violence in Gaza, highlighting the violation of international law and the loss of innocent lives. In a heartfelt post in Hindi on social media platform X, she lamented the staggering death toll. Priyanka Gandhi questioned when humanity would awaken to the devastating consequences and whether the consciousness of being human still exists. Panic and concern grip Arnia and other areas of the Araspura sector in Jammu and Kashmir as Pakistan rangers engage in unprovoked firing, resulting in the damage to the houses and the discovery of mortar shells. The border security force reported that the firing occurred in the Arnia area during the night, with intermittent exchanges continuing until the early hours. While no casualties were reported among local residents, one BSF personnel sustained minor injuries and received medical aid. The incident marks the first such firing from the Pakistani side in nearly six years, prompting heightened tension and a need for heightened security measures. India is in the process of establishing a border surveillance system using drones to deter unexpected attacks, similar to the one experienced by Israel from Hamas. According to sources, in the past week, defense officials in India have held meetings with six domestic drone vendors specializing in surveillance and reconnaissance. An official announcement of an order is expected as early as next month, with the goal of implementing the system in specific border regions by May. The full coverage of India's borders with this system may take up to 18 months and could potentially cost around $500 million annually. The system will utilize high-altitude pseudo-satellites, which are solar-powered drones capable of prolonged operation without needing to land. This initiative occurs as the border tensions between India and its neighbours, Pakistan and China, increase. West Bengal Minister Jyoti Priyo Malik has been arrested by the Enforcement Directorate in connection with an alleged ration distribution scam. The arrest comes after hours of questioning under the Prevention of Money Laundering Act. Malik claims to be a victim of a conspiracy and has pointed fingers at the BJP and its leader Suvendu Adhikari. The ED had previously arrested Malik's confidant, Bakibur Rahman, and is now seeking to gather more information by confronting the two. During the COVID lockdowns, a scam emerged involving irregularities in the public distribution system and the distribution of food grains. Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee expressed concern for Malik's well-being and criticised the ED rates as a dirty political game by the BJP. The BJP, on the other hand, expected the arrest and accused the TMC of deep corruption. Bengaluru city is going to experience some scheduled power cuts until the end of the month. It's all because of the ongoing power crisis in the state and the severe drought in several districts. Citizens can expect some temporary power interruptions between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. A sharp fall in electricity production has resulted in power shutdowns in many areas. Power supply companies including Bescom and KPTCL have undertaken maintenance projects such as renovation, modernization and tree trimming among others. Most of these outages are expected to occur between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. but some work may be completed earlier. Suicide is never the answer to our problems. It's important to reach out for help when we are feeling distressed. If you or someone you know needs support, consider seeking help from mental health experts. You can contact the toll-free helpline number 915-298-7821. Aishwarya, a 26-year-old woman from Sulia, tragically took her own life in Bengaluru. She was the wife of Rajesh and the daughter in law of Griya Pagauda, who ran an ice cream business. Aishwarya worked at a private company in Bengaluru and had recently visited her parents' residence. The government of Manipur has decided to extend the mobile internet ban until October 31. This decision comes shortly after Chief Minister N. Biren Singh had stated that the ban would be lifted in the coming days. The extension of the ban is attributed to concerns that certain anti-social elements may exploit social media to share images, hate speech and incendiary videos that could inflame public sentiments and potentially disrupt law and order. The initial ban on mobile internet in the state was imposed on May 3 due to the violence. While it was reinstated on September 23, it had to be reimposed on September 26 following clashes between students and security forces triggered by the circulation of images of two missing youths. 
The shareholders of Reliance Industries Limited approved the appointment of billionaire Mukesh Ambani's three children to the board, initiating a succession plan for the most valuable company in India. According to the company's stock exchange filing, Anant, aged 28, whose appointment had been contested by proxy advisory firms due to his young age, managed to receive 92.7% of the votes for a board seat, while 32-year-old twins Akash and Isha received more than 98% of the votes. In a remarkable achievement, Sheetal Devi, a teenage archer without arms, made history by becoming the first Indian woman to secure two gold medals in a single edition of the Asian Para Games. She achieved this feat by clinching the top position in the women's individual compound event. It is a hat-trick of medals for the 16-year-old from Jammu and Kashmir. Additionally, Indian shooters Arjun Babuta and Tilotama Sain won a silver medal each in the men's and women's 10-meter air rifle events, thereby securing a spot in the Paris Olympics. India continues to succeed at the 4th Asian Para Games winning over 23 gold medals. Well, these were the updates for the day. For latest news and updates, subscribe to Daily Sala Digital.